I, I think the union is in very bad shape. Um, uh, it, it's in bad shape because the the, uh, the kind of economic dependency culture in Northern Ireland, uh, Wales, and Scotland is now extreme. These are among the poorest parts of the British Isles, and they should not be. Uh, certainly, Wales should not be. Um, and that is because they've been treated as colonies by London. Um, they are persistently patronised with 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 um, forms of devolution, um, which particularly Northern Ireland just simply is inappropriate. Uh, and I just don't think London has any sympathy with them or any knowledge of how to handle them. Um, and the, the result has been, in the case of Scotland, it's extraordinary rise in, in nationalism in the past 25 years, which seems to me very likely to go the same way as it did in Ireland. And the Irish now are very pleased with having been broken, having broken with England. And I think probably Scotland will one day be the same, although it won't be the same. It, we're, we're a highly centralised country. Uh, everything comes to London, um, including me. Um, uh, and London is simply where it's at. And it's very difficult if you're living and working in London and ruling the country from London uh, to have any sort of empathy with, um, with the provinces of any sort, but particularly with, with places that consider themselves subordinate nations. Um, whether that word is appropriate, I don't know. But right back in history, London has handled these places badly. It's achieved a, a sense of grievance and resentment, which I, the world has drawn it quite well. It's quite extraordinary. I mean, for the, a place just you know, a couple of hours from London should be so hostile um, to its neighbour as most of Wales is to England is, is, is really terrible. And I just think it's the result of constant misgovernment from London. Um, we go on about other countries being misgoverned and corrupt and all these things. We have misgovernment on our, on our doorstep in the, in the relationship between London and, um, and Belfast, uh, um, Cardiff and Edinburgh. It's just extraordinary. To I mean, it, 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 it is extraordinary that for probably 150 years, Scottish independence or Scottish uh, super devolution lost all its traction. It only recurred in the, in the, in the 1970s and 80s, largely as a result of, of the poll tax and things like that. Um, I think that was probably a latent independence movement was always there, but certainly it only emerged at the very end of the 20th century, uh, but it's now clearly raging. Um, and I think the problem really is going to be the, 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 the plausibility of it. Um, I think, I think if, if I was Ireland, I'd be lobbying Scotland like mad on, for, on the virtues of independence from London. Um, but uh, that's, that's not Ireland's business or, or our business. Um, I don't honestly know the answer to your question. I think that devolution or, 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 or decentralization in, in, in the political sense is the opposite of globalization and is, is now a very um, vigorous force. Uh, I don't think it's going to be um, satisfied in Scotland. Once, once, a, once a political system is geared to separatism in a, in a subordinate province, um, it usually doesn't end until they've got it. And Slovakia, Slovenia, all these places, um, uh, the Basques, Basque is almost an independent country now. Uh, Catalonia, I don't know. But most of these places, once the blood is up, uh, as obviously in Ireland, it, it has to be satiated at the end by effective separatism. Um, there are many forms of separatism, but effective separatism. When you were a newspaper editor, you would have gone in and spoken to prime ministers. Were you doing that now? You'd be asking these questions. You'd be talking about, you know, the strategy for the union. When you were talking to people like Thatcher and Blair, did it ever come up as an issue? No, no. Good, good question, but no. Um, it never did. I mean, to be honest, London couldn't care less. I'm amazed that London cares so much about the union. I really am. It seems to me the most natural thing in the world for the Tory party and the Labour party to say, look, you guys in Scotland, it's entirely up to you. Um, you'll lose the subvention. You'll lose all sorts of benefits, but you will be independent of us. Um, we'll be shorn of all these left wing MPs I mean, the Tory party could, can only benefit from this. Um, it's your right. It's your right to decide your future. Um, and it's a distinguished future, and it, it's a future that's perfectly feasible on its own. Um, you'll be you'll be in the, in the top half of European countries by size. Um, good luck to you. Um, neither of us have got anything to lose. I don't see the problem for London here. It's it's to do with the kind of national machismo, the feeling that that, that you know Britain is, is the last shred of empire we've got, and we don't lose it. Um, and and you know, Boris Johnson's terrified of losing it. And, and of course, he's as a result making all the most stupid speeches and the most stupid remarks and, and making it more rather than less like.
And I, I suppose I can't see the point. I mean, what, 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 is, the, what is this all about? Um, we can live perfectly at peace with the Irish and, uh, and for that matter, the world, and one day maybe even the French. Um, but but, um, but uh, we can live at peace with the Scottish if the Scottish run their own country. Um, it's all about politics rather than anything else. Um, anything we're doing at the moment is, is counterproductive. Um, every, every bit of abuse about the Scots is counterproductive. Um, discussions of dumping more money on them as a way of bribing them to stay in the union is counterproductive, I think. Um, it, it, we, 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 we're innovating their economy terribly. Um, we're, we're dragging their young down to England by you know, bribing them with jobs in London. Um, uh, I'm very much in favour of decentralisation of the BBC, if, 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 if that's what's going to achieve anything, God knows. Um, but, but I just don't see why we're so fixated on the union. Uh, why is it? It's, it's almost as if it's a religion. Um, it says in the Bible that we must be united with Scotland. So um, you're a heretic to say anything other than that. I really just don't see the problem. I really... Um, uh, I do agree with the major premise of what you're saying. I don't think, actually, I mean, I'm almost in favour of a, of, a, of, a, of a loaded referendum. Um, I think for, you know, for 51% of the country to want to become a country separate from what it is now is pretty dicey. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd want 60%, you know, I really would, um, if not more, um, because it's such a drastic decision. And you're making it for future generations and so on. So I think it is a very serious matter. It's, it's a very serious matter that actually so many Scots don't want it. Um, and I think that's 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 um, they're right. Uh, this is not my business, is what I'm really saying. Wrong. I think we should not be involved in it. It's a decision for Scotland, for the Scots, um, and we should stand by and wait for them to make that decision. Yes, I think I do. It's a good question. Um, I, I, I certainly. I mean, I think identity politics is now um, we've swerved into it. Uh, I think it's bad. It's a disaster. I don't like it. Um, but identity politics in the, in, in the, in the British national sense uh, has been around for a long time. And it was really just suppressed for the 19th century, partly because of the British Empire and partly through prosperity and so on. Um, but certainly, I mean, in my lifetime, I, my, my father's Welsh, I've always had a house in Wales. Um, I feel half Welsh, maybe, maybe a quarter Welsh. Um, but, um, but certainly, I mean, you just, just watch them speaking during the coronavirus press conferences. Every single one of those, those press conferences in Wales and in, 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 in Scotland is sort of been um, riddled with anti-English sentiment. I mean, trying to make a decision that's different from the English decision, um, making a decision for Wales, for Scotland. Uh, very, uh, one of the most moving things I saw was, um, was, um, Jeff, uh, was um, uh, Jeremy Bowen uh, doing some interviews in Merthyr Tydville about, um, ab about uh, the, the, the big COVID um, problems in Merthyr. And um, he said it was, it was the, she, she was the captain of the Merthyr women's football team. And she was quite something else. And, she, and she, the, the, the question was, what do you feel about being told by the government what to do with your life? To which she said, I hate it. I don't mind so much if it's a Welshman telling me. And I mean, she said it with such force um, you know, when, when, when I see Boris Johnson telling me something to do, I just, I just, I just get enraged. When it's Drakeford, I just say, oh, God. <laughs> um, but, but it was, it was, it was, I remember thinking to myself, that goes straight to your question. Um, th th this is a new, um, this is a new localist identity, which is the result of, of, of uh, decades of centralization and globalization, all these things. Um, and it, it's moved from being an interest in parish councils um, to being um, to, to being nationalist, uh, we're even getting English nationalism now. But 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 uh, I never thought Scots nationalism would get up to twenty percent. I mean, frankly, <laughs> do you think one thing I do think which arises out of that is if, if, if I was a Scots person now, I would really want to get my constitutional lawyers into action. What do we really mean by independence? Um, as we're seeing with Brexit, you can't be independent of your neighbouring continent. You just can't. It collapses at every turn. It's collapsing Brexit. Um, and I'm sure the same is, would be true if there was a, 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 a problem with, with Scotland. The, Ireland remained economically a part of the British Isles. Um, no one's ever quite recognised that. Um, we would have to remain one economy. If you remain one economy, as we found with Europe, 
what does that mean for your, 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 your laws and your structure of government? It means a degree, a degree of federalism. So I'd want to know what Scottish independence would look like from, from the point of view of, 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 of a sensibly devolutionist Scots. 